Hello everybody and welcome back to Hello Charlotte Childhood's End. The hope is to get through the rest of the game tonight. We, I don't know if that's going to happen. It depends. Which ends first, the game or my voice? <laughs> so, let's just jump right into it. Let's play. How you doing, Henri? How you doing? Uh, okay, let's let's look around. Luggage. How she snuck out unnoticed with all these things. Stuff the wardrobe. Oh. Chuck bar for Henri. All right. Let's talk. Wow, this bed is so comfy. Haha. <laughs> Hey, don't jump on it too much. I know, I know. So where will we go from here? Oh, I took care of that. Just a moment. I bring out a pack of pills and hand it to Henri. Here! There's enough for two. What is... Wow, we're not even... We're not even three minutes in to this recording and already... Already you're going too far, game. Ah, <laughs> uh, it only... This game only goes at, like... Uh, at a hundred, okay? It, it doesn't go from zero to a hundred, it just starts at a hundred. Uh, every time. Henri throws the pack into my face. You idiot! She's in front of me in a second, hitting me relentlessly with her small fists, making me take a step backwards with every hit. Wait, what? Miss Warhol? She doesn't back down, lending a punch after another- lending punch after punch. We tumble down to the floor. Ow. So this is what you meant by running away? Suicide? Really? God, you're just like everyone else, leaving me. What are you talking about? Aren't you the one who- The one who what? It's not like we'll cease all contact after I move. God, I really do hate you. Her tears fall down freely, staining my stutter. All you ever do lately is talk about gods and trials and afterlife and all that bull. All you ever talk about is him. What happened to living for your mother? Were you lying that time? Henri, I shut up and listen, Eiler. I accepted. I accept you for who you are, all of you. Your mother may be broken beyond repair, but she loves you too. We both need you. Yet you're throwing your life away like that. What do you know? I didn't plan to live longer than mother will to begin with. I don't say. All mother cares about is Scarlet. It's her who should have been born instead of me. Henri slaps my face. Don't say things like that. Not when I. When you. You haven't even finished your story. I look forward to it every week, you know. Ah. The puzzle pieces start to fall into place. Henri coloring her hair to match mine. The constant messaging. The fake relationship. Henri is a liar. Henri is here. Henri cares. It's getting harder to breathe. Henri's crying. My eyes are dry. Listen. Repeat after me. It's not my fault. Why would I lie to myself? Just do it, god dang it. Yeah, Charles, just do it. <laughs> it's not my fault. Satisfied? It's not my fault. 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 Henri kisses me. Oh. I feel like vomiting. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. We keep repeating it like a mantra over and over. Surprisingly, I feel myself calm down a little. Then a thought occurs to me. Maybe this is how Henri calms herself down all the time. It's just that she would never tell anyone. We lie on the floor for a long time. I briefly wonder if it's properly vacuumed. I want to talk to him again. I know. He never finished Aether Almanac. You know, the main character was reborn multiple times trying to save the White Queen, but something always went wrong, so he had to let her go. Will I ever be able to let go? I don't know. Decide that for yourself. Arg. Alright, I'm dumping you. Oh? If you want to die this much, go on and do it. Henri doesn't care. Just make sure I never learn about it. You're contradicting yourself, Miss Warhol. Jeez. When I'm dating someone for real, I want it to be a cute girl. Like Charlotte. Aw, oh, shut it. But she's the cutest. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so in my fanfiction, you'll totally kiss her on a rooftop, it'll be random, and it will kind of be not consensual. Ugh. Ugh. 
When I meet her, I'm calling her out on being as delusional as you are. Hmm. Ani's such a bully. Ani is a bully. And there's a cat at my computer. Hello, cat. How are you doing, Cinnamon? Excuse me while I go release Cinnamon into the wild. I hug her tightly. It might as well be the last hug we share. Thank you. I mean it. I'm sorry I couldn't accept your feelings. We packed our things and returned home the next morning. The next month, Henri's family moved to another town, like they initially planned. A year and a half after, we stopped talking to each other. All ended well. There was nothing to be sad about. Once upon a time, in a far, faraway land lived the Skin Princess. Every day she changed her skin to appear in the best light to every single person she met. Every night she ripped her skin off, crying from the unbearable pain it caused her, whispering, It's not my fault, it's not my fault, it's not my fault, over and over. Little did she know that all the people in her kingdom were blind to begin with. That's rough. Mom. Mother. It's morning already. Mother. Are you? Oh... She's a monster. No way, not you too. Erk. Oh. It would be easier if my mom was a workaholic who was never home. It'd be easier if we hated each other. It'd be easier if I didn't remember the days when she was still full of energy. Who would want to admit their parents giving up on life and slowly rotting in the bedroom? Who would admit to thinking of their only parent as a parasitic existence? After that day, nothing was the same anymore. Charles's backstory is... is deep. But it's so hard to tell where things belong. Uh, Mr. Eiler? Uh, oh. Why has everybody got weird worm faces? Straight to the bathroom stall, the voices of my classmates follow me. I vomit into the toilet, the morning's breakfast spilling down the drain. Gross. That moment I realized I could never touch a human being ever again. Only your face remained unchanged, white, clean, sterile, free of contagious parasites. Vincent, I want to become clean too. I want to ascend and become white like you. What in the world should I do to wash this filth off? Ah, uh, you knew it all along, didn't you? It was this simple. Zero days until the triangle. Cool. Not cool, but cool. I don't know. What are you doing, Charles? Are you waiting in the ocean? Huh. Would an entire ocean really be enough to wash all the ink off me, I wonder? In the end, I couldn't replace Scarlet. Couldn't help the bullied one. Couldn't choose Henri. Couldn't bring Mother back. In the end, I achieved nothing and didn't amount to anything. I failed the trial. There is an afterlife. I don't want to be the protagonist. Someone like Charlotte would be more fitting for the spotlight. In the end, my story wasn't about overcoming hardships. It was a story of giving up. I hear Scarlet Eiler growl behind my back. You're giving up on your life? Seriously? Stop being childish and return home. I cover my ears. Stop pitying yourself. You're not trying hard enough. Shut up, you monster. You're not even my sister. All you are is but an ugly reflection of my own self. A cancerous tumor on my mind. Hey, listen to me. Turn back this very moment. Her voice is so loud, so loud, but the deeper I sink, the quieter it gets. So I sank and choke and gasp for air and felt my lungs explode. There was nothing to be sad about. All ended well, didn't it? All right, so I'm assuming Charles's stuff is like the first stuff in the timeline. It's weird. I hate thinking of timelines. Trying to figure out timelines is, is a difficult process for big brains. Um, 
my assumption right now is that the whole Charles bit happens first. Then maybe something happens that allowed that starts Charlotte's story. And Charles joins in Charlotte's story and maybe takes the role of Vincent because Vincent's the boy he really admired possibly loved and so he takes that role keeping him alive as like a memoriam to him or something and that's his role in there and then Charlotte's the new protagonist but it keeps echoing stuff from Charles's backstory and that's maybe the bad stuff that's getting I don't know that's kind of where I'm thinking but uh I don't know Wake up, sleepyhead. Charles? That's me. Were you surprised? I, where have you been? I looked everywhere for you all this time. And you look younger. Why? Wait, wait, wait. One question at a time. First of all... Okay, yes. I'm Scarlet now? First of all, I've always been here. It's the universe of my mind, after all. Second, I can change shape and form however I want in this place. You what? Don't you remember? We drowned and died. Then boom, a universe was born. A universe, I'm afraid I- Come on, honor student, this concept isn't that hard to grasp. Like, the evidence is it is that you're no longer, uh, I still don't know what that word is. I'm just gonna look it up. Let me just look it up. I don't know what that word is. I just don't want it to accidentally be, like, an insult or a curse word, you know? Okay. So it's a- It's a- It's a concept- of an object that is created through spiritual or mental powers adapted from t uh, Tibetan sprulpa, which means emanation or manifestation. That's what a tulpa is. Okay. So it's not a curse word. That's good. I was worried that they were insulting her and I didn't know what that was, so I didn't want to say it. But good. You're just a manifestation of my mind. Much better. You're your own person now, aren't you? Uh, yes, you're right. It definitely is strange. Since when did he become so confident in himself? Just how much time has passed since we got separated? It appears that there's a lot I don't know yet. Yes, you've been in the dark this whole time, haven't you? Don't worry, I'll tell you everything. All the secrets. All the hidden facts. The very truth of this world. You might want to keep a journal for that, you know. But why now? Where, where were you hiding all this time? Why I wasn't hiding. It's just that I was afraid of approaching you. I'm sorry. Hmm. That's right, I did terrible things to him. I was so scared of you all this time, but I'm over it now. <laughs> Besides, you're not that Scarlet Eiler are you anymore, are you? Right, I've wanted to properly apologize to you ever since I woke up in this world. It's okay, it's okay. No need to bow your head. I was the one who was acting stupid and selfish all this time. You know, when we became separated, I understood that you were always right. To tell the truth, I'm at a complete loss, so I came to ask for your help. What happened? You see, the current reality is that this world is on the verge of collapse. What? Why? I suppose you're acquainted with Charlotte Wiltshire. I am. What about her? She's the one who's corrupting this world. Everyone's unhappy because of her. She's the one in charge of the public executions occurring on a daily basis. She's the reason why so many students commit suicide and get sick with the contagious disease known as white flu. She's dangerous, psychotic, childish, killing just for the fun of it, and it pays me to see my creations in agony. After all, they're all a part of me, but even though I'm the god of this world, I am but a mere observer. I can't do anything against her. But I can, is what you're trying to say. It's just that I have no one to turn to. I'm so sorry for being so useless. Something's wrong. Something strange. I don't trust this. Leave it to me, what should I do? Oh, that's easy. All you need is to sabotage your story, huh? Listen, the reason why Charlotte Woodsire acts like this is because she constantly feels paranoid of her audience. She despises interactive storytelling and doesn't want the puppeteer to play. That's why your target should be the audience, and not just Wiltshire herself. After all, she's nothing but a mere puppet, albeit a self-aware one. Puppets, audience, just what is happening in this place. But what can I do? That's easy. You have the memories of our past, don't you? I do. Then show them to our puppeteer. Were they to learn the truth of this world was that the truth of this world was this pathetic, they'd stop supporting this story and leave on their own. And, as a consequence, Charlotte Wiltshire will stop hurting others. Genius, isn't it? 
I can rely on you, right? Of course. Leave everything to me. I'll make everything right. After what feels like an eternity, I open my eyes again. The vivid imagery of Charles' past is still clouding my eyes. The growing nausea is becoming too overwhelming to bear. Where am I? Ah, this must be the white society room. Oh, the irony. More importantly, the camera's on? You're awake, huh? Hyler. It's time for the show to start soon, and you're the star. Ah, I see. Hyler must be planning to execute me publicly in order to make an example out of me. This is her way of becoming everyone's savior. This is the end of you, Wiltshire. You won't plague this world any longer. Ha ha ha. Just kidding. You must be thinking you've won, Scarlet Eiler. But you're wrong. I went along with the flow because I wanted to. You know, Charles never shared these memories with me, even though I thought we were friends. But now I know what he's been hiding. You've been a great help. Thank you very much. And guess what? I'm certain now that you deserve a fate worse than death. But you're the abuser here. You're childishly cruel and psychotic. It's you who should pay for your sins. I'm saving the world from you. Miss Eiler, if this place is made exclusively out of Charles Eiler's soul data, the damage I cause is limited to this mindscape and consists entirely of Eiler's thoughts and experiences. I am no more than a puppet with a customizable body and soul. I was born to kill and be killed for everyone's entertainment, all for the sake of making a story. However you, you're a monster. Nonsense. Are you saying nothing counts if it's fiction? Ugh. We are not so not having this discussion. <laughs> I'm saying you should stop with the bull, like, saving and helping, when you were the reason everything became like this to begin with. Moreover, even after his death, you trampled on father's feelings and made a show out of his memories. That I cannot forgive. Not even the fact of you being his tulpa excuses your actions. I- I'm not his tulpa anymore. I just- I just want to make things right. You know what? I don't care. You already ruined everything. Wow, Charlotte's going for it. She's going hard. If you really wanted to stop me, you should have put an end to the mass production of all Charlotte's in the house. But all you did was drug me, assault me, kill me, and make a laughing stock out of father. You called him worthless all the time, but you're the one who won't amount to anything. That's why. I use mother's power. The ropes fall off and my wounds get healed in no time. Even if there's no free will in this world, even if there's a parasite controlling our minds. Those things don't really matter. All I want is to end this once and for all. This is my wish. Oh, shoot. <laughs> She's wishing for the ultimate power, guys. Look at you, scared crapless. What the? Here's some Charlotte trivia. Each one of us has a part of Mother inside our bodies. And guess what? Mother is this world's true god. She's the one in control of everything. She's bestowed each and every Charlotte with a gift. The power that can grant a single wish. A power so spectacular that it only is fitting for a story ending. And I used it just now. That This is ridiculous. But that's how it is. And now you'll get what's coming for you. Oh, oh. I know what I should do. What are you? Oh. Charles, what did you do? Charles, we were supposed to fix this. This doesn't look fixed, Charles. <laughs> Oops. You failed from the very start. First rookie mistake, underestimating your enemy. You thought I was stupid, didn't you? Well, of course, you think everyone's more stupid than you. You thought a side character like you could have a chance against the protagonist? <laughs> oh no, Charlotte, we don't use those words, okay? That's a bad word. I don't think she cares about the bad word, but, you know, uh, it's good to inform people when they're wrong. <laughs> Ugh. Charlotte looks at you. Me. Want to hear a secret, darling puppeteer? Sure, Charlotte, I'm ready. I was aware of your presence all this time. I was aware. You gave me some cho choices, and I got to make decisions. That only happens if you actually bothered to give them to me. Although, if you reloaded the game, you know that already, don't you? I wasn't really hiding it, but did you really think you could fool me? Although, you're probably here just to watch, so I can't blame you. Wait, can I- does something happen if I reload? But how would I do it? I can't get out. I kind of want to see if I could. Uh, am I missing something cool? 
Oh well, Charlotte's murdering things. I should probably pay attention, right, Charlotte? You're probably mad at me for not paying attention. Oh, I wonder if you're not actually playing the game but watching someone stream it instead. Charlotte, sh sh no! We, d we don't... Guys, no, it's fine. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. If that's true, you're a pretty lazy person, aren't you? Charlotte, we don't insult the audience, okay? You don't insult our lovely audience of people watching, okay? <laughs> They're fine. They're wonderful people. We appreciate them. They are not lazy. <laughs> you, you aren't even worthy of being called my puppeteer, is what a person who cared about that would say. Besides, you might uh, not be a wind Windows owner to begin with. Then it's all our fault. We're deeply sorry for the inconvenience. <laughs> Is this not available on Mac or something? <laughs> That's funny. However, whether we're alone or not, I won't be the one to feed your ego. Leave that to the other puppets. Speaking of puppets, won't you beg for your life? Spits in my face. Go to hell, lowly past. Mm, okay then, we'll be back in a second. Guys, it's our favorite time! Execution hour! The best time of the day! Hello, dear friends. So sorry our previous show ended on a sour note. I'll make it up to you by making today's show the most spectacular show ever. Uh. I, oh, I do love this music, though. This is a good track. Like, that's a good... That's a good jazzy track right there. And I love the eyeball motif. Meet this week's special guest, Scarlet Eyler. She's the reason none of you want to get up in the morning. She's the reason you don't get good marks in class, aside from the obviously faulty education system. She's the reason for everything bad that's happened in your lives. Am I biased or am I biased? Who cares? She's the ultimate scapegoat we will ever have in this place. I almost feel bad that today's show off to end. But no time for that. In today's show, we'll make a puppet. So exciting. We will need Scarlet Eyler and a giant blender. First, we'll need to make Scarlet Eyler and put her into a blender. Now add some mint essence, a frilly Lolita dress, some spit, and push the button. And voila. There you go. A splendid puppet. Why is her foot where her head should be? This is what happens when you become tainted with ugly colors. I sure do wonder how well this heap of meat will burn. But let's leave that for the next time we're on air. Thank you for watching. Stay white with us. Ugh. Woo! Well then, that's done. Ugh, <laughs> oh, no way. This early? I stumble and fall, unable to keep my balance. I feel sick. There's no strength in my limbs. They feel numb and foreign. Haha, <laughs> too bad. I wasted my wish on that idiot. If you get your wish granted, your story will end immediately. Didn't I warn you, Charles would say. In the end, I couldn't stay white, huh? I hear footsteps. It's, of course it's him. Looks like it's the end of your story, isn't it, Unit Q84? Mother network power overuse, drug side effects, everyone wanting you dead. All of that must have sped up the process, huh? I laugh bitterly. It sounds borderline hysterical. Too bad your body and soul have an expiration date. Soon to be deleted and disposed of. How is it in the commercials? A new story. A new Charlotte. In this brand new installment, what kind of girl will she be? I'll stab you. <laughs> so dangerous. Wait, is that in the commercial for like the Steam trailer? Ugh, I'm so curious. I want to know all the secrets about this game, but also... Uh, how would you find them? Charles lifts me up from the floor. His embrace is gentle as if he's holding something fragile. Disgusting. I'll miss you, you know? Mother never sets your intelligence parameters too high most of the time. Because of that, I've spoiled you too much. You know far more than the other puppets. That's right, you never shut your mouth. Guilty as charged! I'll be with you in your last moments, Miss Protagonist. Ugh. Are you afraid of death, Miss Wiltshire? No. 
But, you know, after you told me about the nature of the house, I couldn't stop thinking that everything is ultimately hopelessly meaningless. That's when I thought, why play nice if I'm just a disposable asset? Why forge relationships with NPCs? Why care? It's a matter of minutes until my soul cube self-destructs. Everything is pointless and it's all your fault. I know. I try to come up with a witty comeback, but all that comes out is gibberish. Uh-oh. Looks like it'd be better if you don't try to speak right now. <laughs> It'll be okay, Miss Wiltshire. What in the world is he talking about? Just what is going to be okay? Feeling the last bits of strength leave me, I lean on Charles. As much as I want to smash his head against the floor right now, having someone to lean on doesn't feel so bad. I close my eyes and try not to think of anything. Looks like it's the end of my story. Looks like it really the end of her. You? You? Shouldn't it be father? Fa- No, it doesn't matter right now. Q84, she- Is there- Is there really nothing I can do? Aw, how cute. Tiny God's favorite doll just broke. The only pure white one became contaminated in the end. A pity, isn't it? Please, can- Can you save her? <laughs> I'm afraid there's nothing I can do at this point. Look at her, she's decomposing. Weren't you supposed to have, uh, misophobia? Although I can see how much you want to throw up right now. Make sure to take a shower after this, okay? Shut up. As for the alternatives, there's a story where a Charlotte be also became self-aware, albeit without your guidance. Coincidentally, this is the story I and the puppeteer are going to experience soon. Want me to get you that puppet as a replacement? No, it won't be the same. Well, there's another option too. You see, the player has the save files of this puppet's soul data. You could try loading them into a Charlotte vessel, but it will be seen as an error by Mother Network, so I wouldn't recommend it. Unless it's a defective vessel, of course. Oh, I know. How about we use a Vincent vessel for her? Those are hopelessly suicidal anyway, so it's a win-win situation. No, she'll kill me for it. I'm pretty sure all the Charlottes are predisposed to be fascinated with him, though. She was different. She was different. Aw, oh, was she really? Well, in any case, I leave it you to it. I have an audience to entertain. It'd be a waste if the story ended here, after all. Ah, oh, It sounds like I can do something. Like I can reload. Charlotte, episode zero, end. Seize observation journal. Okay. Let's say no. I agree, it's good to take breaks. Rest aside, we'll see you again soon. Hi everybody. Okay, I went through file three and I loaded it and went to see if there's anything different and I didn't catch anything different. So we're just gonna continue on with uh, where we were. Let's continue. Well, aren't you eager? Unfortunately, there's something I have to do in this place. We'll be leaving it shortly. As you may have noticed, this Charlotte wasn't the child you wanted to save. Or did you actually like her more than the Charlotte which side you've been with so far? That's tough. Don't make me s- Mmm. I love- I love them both! They're- they're both so great. Cinnamon Roll Charlotte. No, and Charlotte who was just murderous. But we've- we've played this playthrough with the intent to get our Charlotte- Cinnamon Roll Charlotte to a happy ending. So, on my own time. If this actually makes a difference, I'll, I'll save Q84. But for us, let's, my Charlotte is more important. The Charlotte you met first is the one who matters the most. Well, aren't you a loyal? You must have many questions as to why uh, have I led you to this particular story to begin with. But do believe me, it's vital to understanding everything that will happen from now on. You surely didn't think that we were going to travel in time and change the outcome of prior events, did you? Because we did, that would be rather unfortunate. After all, like I have said before, there's no such thing as rewinding time in the house. One story ends, a new one begins. It's an endless cycle of life. You know how it goes with games. You can always start a new one. Oh. Okay, then. New story. Here we go. Hi, guys. Welcome to my Hello Charlotte episode 3 playthrough, where we're... We're gonna play it for the first time. That's not where I left it. That's not where I left it. The world is clad in white and red. 
The awakened one sings the song of hatred and despair as she drains the color from the breathless bodies. It is the deafening cacophony of pain screams. I lay silent player. Um. Childhood's end. Okay. Okay. The monstrosity hovers above me, sneering. Let's play hide and seek, shall we? I sh I'll give you three attempts. She's seen songs crossing my cheek. I feel something crawl into my ear, but I'm frozen in terror. It's feet tall to resist. Run, little girl, she says. Let's meet where mother is. Who is mother? If Charles is father, who is mother? And now I'm Scarlet. Huff, huff. I have to hide. You're leaving a blood trail. I don't think you can hide. Oh! Oh, it's a dead Charlotte! I... <sighs> I don't like it. <laughs> huff, huff. No way. After threatening me, she... What the hell? You don't have the right to be dead. Not after what you've done. You absolute freak show. Psycho. Murderer. No, no, she can't be dead. After I've seen what she's capable of, love? No, it can't be. I've seen her die before, multiple times. Hey, you. You're here, right? The one who was pulling the strings? That's me. Hello. Confirm if you are. Confirmed. I see. It's just she said that. You really do exist. Please, please help me find a place to hide. I'm injured and Wilshire might still be looking for me. I can't afford to die here. After she- after everyone- Scarlet vomits on the floor. Ugh. That monster. My only really problem is that I have restricted access to all the areas in the house. However, now that we have this corpse, this might not be a problem. Thankfully, I only need the eye. Scarlet brings out a box cutter. Mm. Got Charlotte's eye. Let's go to the elevator. Switching control settings from Charlotte to Scarlet. With Scarlet's minimalist worldview, you'll be able to see the house in a new light. Oh, I don't. Mm. An eye scanner, huh? Well, then here goes nothing. All right. Ugh. Ugh. I'm so interested and curious. But this is also so horrifying. Please press the elevator button. Oh, I- <laughs> The elevator just moved last time. Please hurry. The elevator usually just goes, okay? I didn't know I didn't need to press buttons. Oh, right. If you plan to stick around, how about I give you tasks from now on? I'm sure it'll be easier to navigate that way, so... Find a way to enter the room so first floor. I can't go back to the second floor, so this is the only place we can hide. Door is locked. It's locked. A little faster. I'm bleeding. It's like a speech recognition. We can't go past here. Oh. Oh. Well, we got some images. We got 45 under 55. Read the journal. I am incredibly curious. Log 1 to 45. One log one or two forty six. As a rule, all the Charlottes have a parasite in their brains. Unit Q eighty four is a special case. It's safe to assume that she might be a defective unit, as there's no trace of the parasite in her brain. As a result, she isn't acting according to the program. So far, the defective units have had different deviations, varying from having hermaphroditic bodies to being physically or mentally disabled. I am yet to confirm if Q eighty four has any of the disabilities common to most of the defective units. One of the most common things in the stories is that all Charlottes are perpetually abused without fighting back. I presume it's a way to create an emotional connection to the character. As soon as you Q84 learned about it, she immediately took measures to fight back. She stole the samples of white flu from the workers' laboratories and deliberately infected all the students who posed a threat to her. Moreover, she founded the White Society, who exists for the sole purpose of lowering the population of the school. She's planning to use mob mentality as a psychological weapon against the students themselves. 
Ever since Q84 learned that she cannot die until her story ends, her mind state has been more unstable. Whenever she gets badly hurt, she immediately ends her own life without a second thought. I think it may not be wrong to assume that she's afraid of dealing with the long-term consequences of injury. Out of all NPCs, Q84 seems to have taken a liking to Henri Warhol. However, all she does is push her around and make her laugh at her jokes. This story is Miss Warhol is quite timid and vulnerable, so I can't help but feel sorry for her. But I keep reminding myself that she's not the Henri Warhol I knew. As much as I hate to admit it, I don't think Q84 will last for long. Her obsession with the color white is almost religious, which is quite worrying. Moreover, Q84 doesn't seem to have forged meaningful relationships with any of the tenants. However, she does experience loneliness and subconsciously longs for attention. I will be there for her. Alright, let's enter this vent. Storage room. Ugh. Ow. Sparks start to dance before my eyes. This room will do. I think I can rest here just a little. When I open my eyes, the lights blind me. Have I died? Oh, Felix. Felix, Felix, Felix. Felix! You're cool. You're you're a good constant in every world. I like you. <laughs> you have ten seconds to explain yourself. Otherwise, I'm activating the security system. Now I'm fairly sure the afterlife doesn't have a pink haired mid it doesn't have pink haired midgets threatening me. Ten, nine, eight. Shh. I cover the boy's mouth with my hand, silencing him. Umph. Quiet. She might hear us. Uh, what? What? Whom are you talking about? Charlotte Wiltshire. Do you know her? I do, so. Is she here? No, she isn't. She hasn't come home yet. Home. Oh god, oh no. I have to run. I abruptly get up, only to wince in pain. Can you kindly calm the F down? Wilshire isn't here and I'm not her associate, okay? Uh, my ears. Keep your language in check, will you? You're in no position to lecture me, miss. I treated your wounds. Where's my thank you, Mr. Honecker? Honecker? As in Felix Honecker? Uh, yes, so? I once read a novel with a character named that. Not again. Yes, yes, I know, I've read it too. Let's never talk about this again. Ah, oh, so that was a sensitive subject. It's nice to meet you, I'm Scarlet Eiler. I'm sorry for being rude. I thank you for sewing up my wounds. I just panicked. I- Alright, alright, I understand. What did she do this time? What do you mean- No, it doesn't matter. Charlotte Wiltshire murdered every single person on the second floor. Oh, that takes some talent. So you're the sole survivor. Yes. She wanted to play hide and seek. So she let me go. Ah, uh, hide and seek. She is the lady at the beginning who wanted to play hide and seek, and that's why she killed Felix. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, but it also doesn't make sense. But I think that was Charlotte. Maybe not this Charlotte, but a Charlotte. She seriously messed up, saying things like, I'll meet you where mother is. What could it possibly mean? She couldn't have possibly met my mother, because my mother is kind, beautiful, and understanding. Do you have parents, Mr. Honecker? I'm not so sure anymore. He turns away, his voice becoming eerily quiet. I decide not to press him further. I have an uncle, though. I see. Say, are there any other people on this floor aside from you and your uncle? Hey, hold your horses. The fact that I've tended to your wombs doesn't mean that we're on friendly terms now. Why should I trust you? If anything, we should quarantine you in case you brought contagious diseases from the second floor. I'm fairly sure I'm not contagious. Like I said, we can't be sure. No one here is allowed on second floor. Wiltshire excluded. So, you've never been to school? School? What's that? My wounds are being treated by a kid without a degree. What good would a piece of paper with a signature do you? Look, you aren't coughing up blood anymore, isn't that evidence enough? You're right. I'm sorry. Never mind that. Sleep for now. If you do anything funny, Mr. Bennett will break your neck with a TV remote. This Mr. Bennett sounds like a scary person. If you try to leave this room, the doors will burn you to death, but I'll bring you food so you won't starve. Have any preferences? No, not really. Alright, I'll be back in a few hours to check up on you, Miss Eitler. You're my patient for now, so rest assured. No one here will harm you. Okay. I want to believe him. He leaves the room. Good old Felix. Dependable Felix. I stare at the ceiling. Hey, puppeteer. Thank you for helping me get here. It worked out somehow, didn't it? I think I need a name to refer to you by. How does Lilith sound? Or would you prefer Seth? Hi, 
Hi, I'm Gail, but you can't call me Seth. There's only one cinnamon roll, and one not cinnamon roll, but kind of a godlike observer who can call me Seth. So you may call me Lilith. Alright, Lilith it is. It was my mother's name. You know, I have memories of the true realm. It's a place that's nothing like this world. In that realm, I didn't even have a physical body of my own, nor was I my own person. Here, everything changed, but even though I have these memories, I don't feel a connection to them, as if they don't belong to me anymore. Or perhaps they didn't in the first place. Still, I feel like I should apologize to the person Scarlet Eiler of that world hurt the most. However, no matter where I look, I can't find him anywhere. Sorry, I'm rambling my thoughts. I need to rest. Good night, Lilith. <sighs> Good night, Scarlet. You're not Charlotte, but I will try to take care of you as best I can. I dreamt of piles of bodies, soaked in red, with Charlotte Wiltshire standing, sitting on top of them. Find me, Charlotte Eiler, she says. Let's meet where his mother is. Pushing me down, hovering above me, Charlotte Wiltshire is... crying. I wake up in a cold sweat. Awake already, Mr. Honecker. Morning, Miss Eiler. Saw a bad dream? More like a nightmare. I- I have to find Wiltshire. Eh? Why so sudden? Weren't you hiding from her? I just... remembered something. Huh? And well, after you finish with my treatment, I'll have nowhere to go. Everyone I knew was dead. One wrong step and the doors will evaporate me, and now Wiltshire's playing my dreams. I'll find her and get it over with. What do you plan to do that? How do you plan to do that? And when you find her, how are you sure that she won't kill you? I haven't thought about it. Yet yet. But I want to understand her. I'm afraid the logic behind your decisions is kind of wonky to me. You can't understand. You weren't there. She's not human. Charlotte Wiltshire is a monstrosity. She had her hair turned into enormous meaty appendages that she stabbed everyone with, as if a tumor grew on her body. Wait, appendages? A tumor? I might know what you're talking about. Please follow me. Here, I'll help you get up. Take the t IV with you. I slowly get up and follow Mr. Honecker. We're going to the secret room! Secret room! Ooh. Pixelated guts. What is this? Organic matter infected with a parasite. We were able to extract it out of Miss Wiltshire while she was sleeping. Killed her in the process, but she respawned anyway. But there's a whole pool of it. I know. After it obtained a host, it kept growing like a tumor. We were able to contain it because the host isn't sentient in any way. It's a... a brainless mass of organs with a sentient host to feed on, however, this parasite can manipulate the fabric of time and space. I call it the Oracle. Oh. If it, it's this powerful, then can I become a host? Oh, what? You have to be kidding me, right? Were you listening to what I just said? Yes, I was. I'm fairly sure this is the same parasite that Wiltshire used to cause the massacre. If I become its host, I'll be able to did the sleeping pills and pair your thinking processes? Yeah, Scarlet, did they? <laughs> This is where you ask me for advice, and the advice I'd give you is don't let a freaking organ parasite into your body. Miss Tyler, it's basically suicide. I want to agree, but all that comes out of my mouth is it doesn't matter. Huh? No, I. Find me, Scarlet Island. Just. Please. I have to find Wiltshire no matter what. I need the Oracle to face her as a people. No, no. What in the world am I saying? You say so, huh? He agreed. We only met yesterday, nor are we friends, so I'm not really in a position to argue. Besides, I, uh, no, it doesn't really matter. I'll do it. Let's go. You can inject me with organs? You seem to be quite knowledgeable about Wiltshire. I've been wanting to hurt her for a while. Have you ever seen anyone die in a gruesome death and have an exact copy of them walk in like nothing happened a minute after? There's something seriously off about that. Right, I thought the same way. Plus, Miss Wiltshire herself is mentally unstable. She seemed to be adamant of the conviction that all of the house's inhabitants are NPCs. NPCs? Non-player characters. Apparently, she strongly believed that this world is a game. Is that so? That's ridiculous. Although, she said about puppeteers was true, so what if- Hi, Scarlet. You're an NPC, technically. How do we break it to her, guys? 
We'll need to take one of the vials from the cabinets on the left. However, we can visit the oracle pool again if you want to. Although it is gross, I find it strangely fascinating. There it is, God in a jar. It seems empty. It's a parasite. Of course you can't see it. However, it's desperate for a host. Despite being this small, it's extremely powerful. Still, it might drive you crazy. Eat you from the inside. Are you sure it's worth the risk? No, I don't want this. I have to find Wiltshire. I'm scared. I have to find Wiltshire. Please, let's call it off. I have to find Wiltshire. It is. If you say so. Let's get started then. Oh, is this like... Her thoughts conflicting with the game forcing her as a protagonist to do what, like, the plot needs her to. Like, is that why it keeps flashing? Because we've made her a protagonist? Alright. What do I need to do? I'll operate you and insert a part of the oracle into your brain. Let's go. Brain surgery. Casual. No big deal. No one's ever had to think or... Prepare for brain surgery. I have to put you to sleep first. It's brain surgery after all. Drink this. Okay. Will you manage by yourself? You do not believe in my abilities, do you? Sorry. Can't help but be skeptical. I mean, you're like a 12-year-old child and we're about to do brain surgery. I know. There's no guarantee your brain won't reject the foreign substance. And your mind, too. You might not recover after this. I'll prescribe you suppressant drugs to prevent the parasite's rapid reproduction, but I can't promise anything. Nothing about this is fine. Find me, my mind supplies. Fine, I have to find Wiltshire. Let's start then. I close my eyes. You're shaking. Are you scared? I'm not. I am. I feel Felix reassuringly grip my shoulder. I'm so pathetic. I squeeze my eyes shut, trying to calm down. But then, a thought occurs to me. I'm no longer alone. For the first time since I woke up in this world, someone is here for me. Even if I make a mistake, there's someone to guide me. Even if I fail, there will be someone to remember I existed. Lilith is here. Hello! <laughs> uh. Oh. That's a look. That's also a look. <laughs> well, well, well. What do we have here? A cute little mind library. You will deny it, but you would- Ow, in fact, believe we are some kind of god. A deus ex machina to help you achieve your goals. So I have to leave- I have to move this off my ear directly. It's like- It's a lot of noises from the right side. But more than that, you're terrified of us. Terrified of Charlotte Wiltshire. Say, how do you feel to watch all your classmates get turned into meat meat? They all were oh so nice to you, but bullied Miss Wiltshire all the time. Why is that, we wonder? And it was no ordinary bullying. After all, her story wasn't R-rated for nothing, was it? Just look at all those camera angles. It's all her own fault, they cried. You knew, yet did nothing to help. Because the truth is, you didn't like her at all, did you? Treating everyone like NPCs, putting yourself above all of you. Miss Wiltshire was really unpleasant, wasn't she? I try to speak, but all that comes out of my mouth are pain sounds. Um, uh, too bad you can't counter our speech with a witty comeback, right? Alright, we don't mind giving you some freedom of speech. <coughs> the oracle waltzes around the place, falling apart and reassembling all over again. <laughs> hey, class rep. Why the sudden determination to find Wiltshire? Are you sure it's not mind control? I don't know, but I'll find her and make it clear. I couldn't understand her during her lifetime, so maybe I'll understand her in her afterlife. She seemed to know something I didn't. <laughs> hmm, are you sure you'll succeed at all? <coughs> I'll succeed, no matter what. With Lilith, it's possible. We made a deal. <laughs> oh, how lovely. But how can you be sure that your puppeteer can be trusted? It seems like you're quick to trust each passing stranger once they're even remotely kind to you. For all you know, they might be on Wiltshire's side. Oh, sh don't, don't tell her that. They're with me now. That's all that matters. <laughs> they might be simply curious. It's not like they're deeply invested in your character, having known you for a few hours. Don't tell her! <laughs> Guys! Okay, okay. Oracle, Oracle, we need her. That's the only way this plot progresses. Please don't make her kick us out. <laughs> Charlotte is everyone's favorite girl. And look at you, you're obnoxious. Keep quiet. You're just a pest. Sure, sure. Well, shut up. 
The oracle falls apart again, turning into a pulsating mass of organs. I lay down on the floor, curling into a ball. It's okay, I can do this. Would you like to save? Alright. Look, we're saving Charlotte. I don't care if they give me an option that's like, here's Scarlet or Charlotte who you're saving. I'm saving Charlotte, okay? She's a cinnamon roll and lovely and she gets one happy ending. Dang it. No matter who I have to throw in instead. Morning, how are you feeling? Ah! My head hurts. Get it off. 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 Ah, easy. Wait a moment. I'll run a quick test. As I thought, this is bad. Your body's rejecting the parasite. You won't last for long. Figures. How much time do I have? A week. Maybe less. Can I do anything about it? No. Congrats on getting meat cancer. And for how long have I been out? Three days. We moved you back to the storage room after the operation. We? I talked to Bennett and Florence. They agreed to cooperate. I see. And Wiltshire? Still not back. I can assume she might have left to another floor. To find her, you'll have to go up. Then, second floor should be out of the question. I doubt she'd go back there. Hmm, that might be true. We can narrow down the places by detecting the ones with anomalies. Well, that would be a great help. Let's go then. Florence will help us with the coordinates. She's the tech specialist here. Follow me. Florence! What's a scoop? Hi, I'm Florence. Pleased to make your acquaintance. That's how I imagine Florence. Hello, Florence, I'm Scarlet. So, Felix said you accepted the Oracle voluntarily. You'll die in a few days, right? Uh, well, Florence, please, have some tact. Uh, sorry, sorry. Say, you two wanted me to find the coordinates of places with similar- with power anomalies detected, right? I found four. I, I sent the data to your PC, Mr. Honecker. Good job, Florence. You can always count on me. We detected signs of Wiltshire's presence on 4th, 6th, 9th, and 11th floor. The first dimension is the language land. It's located on the 4th floor. Alright, I'll get going then. Wait, what is it? Your condition is still unstable. Are you sure you'll be fine on your own? I don't need any help, and I don't trust any of you. We're nobodies to each other. Indeed, however, you won't be able to operate the elevator with your level of access. We, however, have access to the floors from 4th to 9th. Aw, oh, dang it, he's right. Why not go straight to 11th, by the way? There's a problem with that. Anyone can go to 11th, but no one comes back. It's the point of no return, so I strongly advise going there last. Fine, I don't have time nor strength to argue. Just let's go already. The sooner I find Wiltshire, the better. You don't care about anything else, huh? I'll be going with you this time then. Let us depart. Have a safe trip, you two. To the fourth floor, then the ninth floor, and the sixth floor, then the eleventh floor. Something rushes in, completely filling the room. Can't breathe. <laughs> the end! When I regain my consciousness, I find myself gasping for air. Suddenly, my mind fills with arrangements of letters, words, sentences. It's suffocating. I open my eyes after what feels like an eternity. Where? Ooh. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry, I don't really understand what you're saying. They're saying that they saved you from drowning. It's the language of the old world. Honecker, you're okay. Well, duh, I didn't lose consciousness. I'm not a weakling. In the Logos Village. It's located in the dimension inhibited, inhabited by anthropomorphic languages. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. We don't have much time. My scanning devices detected Miss Wiltshire's presence outside of the village. Alright. Wait, what did I s just say right now? Oh, looks like you got infected. What? Try saying something. It's like I thought. Must be because you almost drowned in the word sea. What does it mean? Is there something wrong with me? Yeah, well, got the local version of a cold. Pros, you'll be able to understand their language. Cons, none really. It wears off after a while. Great, another disease. Don't insult it. If anything, it's the fastest way to learn a foreign language. I'll be it tape temporarily. Alright, fine. How do you happen to know so much? I don't happen to know. I've been studying these floors for a while. I thought of them as dimensions at first, but it would be more correct to refer them as floors. Is that so? I'm quite dedicated, huh? I just want to be like uncles all. Anyhow, anyhow, try talking to the person who saved you. Thank you for saving me. You're welcome, dear guest. Our purpose is to serve you speakers. Feel free to ask me anything. Logos Village. Sp 
specific language. Oh. Something I'm gonna do work see. about Wordsy. Okay. Back to the sea. On a final causing the disappearance. Right, Mr. Honecker? Sorry, you cannot stay here. Is that so? You'll have to pass through the gate to get there. Gate. Special entry requirements. You solve the riddle, you'll pass through the gate. <laughs> Riddles! May you be blessed by the prism, and may you grant you its light through your journey. Here, have a cookie. It'll cheer you up. Leave the village. Let's do our best. Ooh. Pyramid. Prisms. Prisms. All right, how do I get out of here? Nope. How do I leave? Concept of medicine, huh? It's more like there's nothing they can do. So. Oh. How do I get out? Gallery. <laughs> That's Man, these are all very depressing. Okay. And last creepy one. Yeah, that seems about right. I'm thoroughly disturbed. Makes me feel sick. Yeah. I don't blame you. Oh, hello. Let me leave. What four letter word becomes short if you add a second letter to it? Answer, it's, I hate the clues all around the village. Please find all the clues first. There's more to this puzzle than you might think. Alright, is it in the prisms? I can't go in there. It's like a cookie. That's a fortune cookie message. Zero equals nine. What kind of fortune is that? It's a fortune fortune. Anything here? All right. Clue. Journal. Minus something useful inside. Look, there's a page out of the riddle. It's only one sentence turned on it. Let's write it down. So what's the clue? Four is an upside down perpendicular, it says. Okay. Uh, 
actually, let's ticket. Three visitors are allowed at the same time. Did I find all the clues? Here you go. A simple Hush. Scrap of paper. Eight. O equals nine. R S. Upside down per T or something. So sort, so eight, nine, three, four, eight, nine, three, four. Eight, nine, three, four. Very well. We leave. Well, we did it. Too much to memorize at once? Photograph of memories would be a problem. Let's write it down in any case. Memo. Challenge manager without looking at the memo. Had challenge accepted. Lilith, reach the end. Four up, then left. Four, one, three, two, four, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four, one. Three up, two right, four up. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four. Two left, three up. One, two, one, two, three. We did it! Yay! <laughs> okay, getting close already. Sources mentioned anomalies up ahead. Brace yourself. Saving this boat. This janky boat. Same as Tyler, yes. What do you plan to do when you find Wiltshire? I want to talk to her. There was clearly something she knew about this world that I didn't. Truth be told, I don't understand a lot of things about this place. It's so much different from what I was used to. Different in what way? Well, this place just doesn't make any sense. The only people even remotely resembling True Realm is in the school. I never left the second floor because of that. It was the only place where I felt safe. But Wiltshire leveled it to the ground. I have no place to belong anymore. Are you nervous? I'm fine. The sooner I find Wiltshire, the better. I wonder if we'll discover the secret behind the disappearance of the villagers, too. Well, I think we're about to find it. Hold on tight! Whee! Vortex! My head hurts. Mr. Honecker, are you okay? Yeah, sort of. Ugh, I should have worn a hazmat suit. We're underwater? I feel like features become tense. Miss Eiler, look up! I do as I'm told, and the scene that unveils before me is... Words. Peoples. People word peoples? And one really long hair, dude. What is this? Looks like we found the missing villagers. They're all tangled inside. It appears they were absorbed into this thing, whatever it is. Can we still save them? Well, halt. You cannot go any further. Who are you? I'm the guardian of the word sea. I protect the great cluster. This is how it should be. The great cluster? The pure white one came and unified us. The pure white one became the core. It was both our and her wish. The pure white one. It was about Wiltshire. Where is she? 
My hypothesis is there's more than one Wiltshire in the house. More than one? But how can that be? The Wiltshire who lived on our floor never went to fourth floor, did she? However, there's something I don't understand. Why are you guarding it? Isn't this world cu word cluster the reason for the extinction of your people? The word cluster is not the cause, it is the consequence. Can you just tell us what's going on? I think I get it. The Great Cluster absorbs all the existing languages into it and unifies them into one. And this floor Charlotte Wiltshire must be in the center of all of it. She's the core of the Great Cluster. The core? But why do this? Aren't your people suffering? This is how it should be. The speakers are hurting. The speakers want to understand each other. So we will endure. For their sake. Looks like we've come across a purely altruistic civilization. Why does it have to be like this? The villagers aren't happy about it. If anything, they're all depressed. It does not matter. We exist to be used by the speakers. If they want to hurt, we will become their weapons. If they want to deceive, we will become their shields. If they want to connect, we will become their bridges. If this must be achieved at the cost of our lives, so be it. This is how it should be. Let's go back, Miss Hyler. Our Miss Wiltshire isn't here. There's nothing we can do to help them. Right. Goodbye, Worsi Guardian. Farewell, speakers. And so we returned to first floor and I fell into a deep sleep. Well, anticlimactic, but okay. <laughs> Ugh, I haven't had enough coffee to deal with you, Oracle. This isn't coffee, though. It's just water. And so I can last longer, hopefully. I'm gonna, gotta keep my voice in tip-top shape for all these character voices I'm doing. Thank goodness I didn't do character voices. Otherwise, this game, we'd never get to the end of it. I'd be done after 30 minutes. Morning, Miss Isla. Rise and shine. I find myself unable to get up from the floor. My body feels heavy. <laughs> oh, what's wrong? Not feeling well. What about your little MacGuffin quest? Shut up. The oracle extends their hand to me. Ah, uh, here. A helping hand. There might be a, seem a little hard right now, but let's get through it together. I don't take the oracle's hand. Aw, if you don't accept our help, your condition will worsen, you know. My condition doesn't matter. You're nothing more than a tool, and I'll be the one that decides when to use you. So you don't dare- so don't you dare manipulate me. Aw, you're just so afraid of being incapable, aren't you? Because in truth, our little Miss Skylet Eiler isn't all that smart, is she? Intelligent, athletic, and all around perfect. Just who in the world is that? Your super ego? You only try to seem proper and organized, when in truth you struggle with the most basic memory puzzles. So much that you'd rather have your puppeteer solve them for you. But that's okay. You don't have to be special, you know? Just remember that we accept you just the way you are. Look, you know, if I had someone who could remember puzzles for me, I'd ask them to do it too. Hanukkah isn't here. I should go look for him. No, you shouldn't. Time to run into something bad. Felix, my boy. How you doing? Good morning. Which floor are we going to next? Mr. Honecker? Uh, you were here. He didn't notice me at all. I'm busy. Lots of data analysis to do. Take Florence. Sixth floor. Fine. Not very talkative today, are you? Need time to recharge. Tiny transmission device. Hello, Florence. Can you babysit Miss Isler today? No, no, and yes, fine. You'll get your promotion. Florence arrives a few minutes after. Morning! Talk to me as soon as you're ready to depart, Miss Isler. Well, let's just go! My attempts at friendly conversation were completely ignored. Oh, Florence. You're trying your best, but this is not a game about friendship. <laughs> this game's about a lot of things. A lot of things. Friendship is not one of them. And here we are. Welcome to Six Floor Laboratories. This place looks quite high tech. Well, of course, this place is built like a big testing polygon. Have you been there before? Yeah, kinda. Dr. Huxley makes us run all kinds of errands, so they involve other floors too. Dr. Huxley? Henry Huxley. He's Mr. Honecker's, uh, uncle. Yeah, that's what we agreed on. Not the guy who created a weird clone for him. Anyhow, Dr. Huxley is an amazing man. We all look up to him. So let's get to business, shall we? I love her hair. Well, this is new. Wasn't here before? Yeah, I can assume there's a reason they've reinforced the security measures, but I can't fathom what it could be. Honestly, I'm a little disappointed. There's no thrill to it if you can't beat dice into cubes. What 
be weird to say that I'm relieved. Alright, into the chambers! Can I go into the chamber? Of course, do you have any vessels to spare in case this one dies? No. Then there's your answer. Yay! Virtual vessel creation successful. Success! Just so, do I just respawn if I die? Yeah, you will respawn, but I won't advise dying because you'll go back to this very room, probably. Alright. Oh, I can't save right now. Puzzle solving. Memorize the sequence. I don't have time for this. Handle it, Lilith. Lilith, I, I'm handling it. Alright. Empty left. Empty bottom left corner, full top right. Empty top left, full bottom left, bottom right. I'll try. Enter the right sequence or self destruct. Enter sequence. Alright. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, we're super fast. Empty bottom left. Full top right, empty top left, and then like a book. Correct! Did a great job. I'm here for you, Scarlet. Here for you until I'm here for Charlotte. Say Florence, yes? Dance beat. You're really talented. Why do you work for Helix? Well, I don't really work for Ms. Honecker. It's his uncle I'm indebted to. He saved me from Oberia, after all. Oberia? Is that a company name? Nah, it's Planet! planet with two types of humans. Overmen and men. In other words, those who are worth something and those who aren't. As I came to know later, there really wasn't a difference. I was a test subject for new inventions in the prosthetics department. They cut my own limbs off and kept reattaching new ones over and over. I couldn't move by myself and I had to be taken to my room in a wheelchair. They fed me through a tube. Now that I remember it, personal hygiene was also impossible without the health of, of the assistants. Talk about personal space. Why are you smiling while telling me this? It's a horrible memory, isn't it? Huh? Uh, I don't really think about it. What's up with that reaction? Shouldn't there be an organization that should have defended your rights as a human? There were many, but they killed more of us than the scientists did. How come? Shouldn't they protect you? If we couldn't be used commercially or kept as pets, be it for therapy or sexual purposes, we weren't needed by overmen. That's the reality that had to be accepted. Besides, you can't just trust an organization that claims euthanasia to be a product of love. I'm sorry. None of us need your pity, Miss Eiler. You can ask me anything. So, uh, are all of your limbs artificial? Yep, that's right. I assembled them myself. Before that, there was a period when I had various alien-looking prosthetics. Then Dr. Huxley cut all of them off, so I lived as a talking torso for a while. Bennett was in charge of taking care of me back then, but he wasn't really good at it. But I'd rather not dwell on the past. So let's proceed! Walk on blue and yellow only. Okay, that was easy. Each person must drink from the vials to proceed. The vial on the left contains poison. It's just a simulation, right? Right, but one of us won't be able to proceed past this point. But then how? This might be a trap too. Yeah, they want to separate. So it's okay, Miss Tyler. I can drink it. Are you sure? Yep, you need to find Miss Wiltshire, don't you? So don't worry about me. Besides, this whole situation smells like a cheap angst prompt. I'm not letting that escalate. I drink from the right vial. Lawrence drinks with vial poison. Yuck. Her image becomes distorted and then there's silence. She's gone. But I need to keep moving forward. Let's go, Lilith. Onward! Do not fear warm colors. So red. Ah! Shoot. Okay. The problem is I can't see them early. Witch's house had a thing like this. Oh. But like, okay, so here. Oh. Right, then left one. Ah, I just zoomed. Congratulations. 
Florence, I told you, I got back faster than you completed those rooms. But how? Let's say I took the secret passage. Anyway, let's get moving. Miss Watchard's presence is this close. Sure. Oh, what in the world is this? Well, this place doesn't change one bit. You've been here before? Yeah, well, it's a long story. You can take your time looking around. Why isn't anything moving? This area appears to be in stasis field. Just look at all these match cats. Whatever's in charge of this place, they probably wanted to stop the infestation from spreading. What? What? Match cats? Both a magic and a maggot and a cat. Match cat. Gross. Come on, they're lovely. I've always wanted to keep one, but we workers aren't allowed to have pets. There's no way I'm ever keeping one. To each their own. Let's get to our investigation. Did you know they make really loud sounds when they communicate? Like, meow. Head was torn off. Soaked in blood. They feed on brains? No, no, they aren't zombies. If that's what you want to know. They feed on feelings and emotions. Mainly negative ones at that. Fear is a really strong emotion, for example. Aww. They make really loud sounds. Poor match cats. Ah, oh, I found something in his pocket! A USB stick. Then use it at the console. Alright. <sighs> Show me your secrets! The Oracle, the Parasite. Do you remember we were on a different floor? Local scientists might have given this name to something else. Finally! Something written on the screen. Can you read it? Let's see. It says the Oracle Project. Name, Charlotte Witchire, Unit 091. Status, birth, uh, brain activity green, vital activity green, lung oxygen green. It, is she still alive? Seems like it. They're probably keeping her alive for the sake of TV world. It's a universe of her mind, after all. If she were to escape or die, it'd ruin their show so they weaken her body and keep her mind on suppressants. Uh, ironically, it's a match cat infestation that got these scientists in the end. Like this. What? I didn't hear you. Something like this. It's too cruel. It's the entertainment industry, Miss Eiler. You just need to accept it. There's no way I'd accept something like that. It's wrong. Why should it be like this? What should we do? We can't leave her like this. Is that so, then? What do you suggest, Miss Eiler? Kill her? No! Then transfer her brain into a new vessel, completely wiping her memory, therefore killing her as a person? No, I... Then the only right answer is, let's go home! But I just want to help. You can't. There's nothing you can do. I... Let's leave this simulation, Miss Eiler. Your Miss Wilshire isn't here. It's unfair. I'm fairly sure she didn't want to end up like this. How must it be that way? Perhaps that's how it should be. There's no way I'll be at peace with this. Why can't I save anyone? Because you're not the protagonist? I don't know. With a heavy art, we shut down the virtual simulation program and return to our bodies. I return to normal. Let us check on Florence. Alright. Hey Florence, Florence, wake up! Ugh. Okay, you're awake. We worry too much, miss. I'm alright. You don't seem like it. What happened? Oh well, this capsule is advertised as a detox spa, right? Looks like the soap effects wore off. Excuse me? Let me explain. We workers have regular soap intakes as a must. It affects us in a way where we become re restless and hyperactive, alarmingly so. Also, it lowers our intellectual abilities and inhibits analytical thinking processes. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to work 20-hour shifts with such vigor. Nobody would. Not after what we went through before our life here. You were raised in labs, right? Yeah. Imagine living in a box with no control over your life. Lights go on and off. Sometimes you get food, sometimes you don't. Sometimes the food's poisoned. On purpose, of course. It was like that for Ben, too. No wonder he wants to forget. Thankfully, they didn't use us for breeding, but there was a department for that, too. Lecter was there. Lecter? A co-worker of mine. You don't want to know him. Okay. Most of the workers have severe PTSD. Except the androids. They have it easy. That's why soap is the best thing that happened to us. We can just happily move forward and do errands without thinking too much. I'm trying to keep the dose in check, but Bennett is a total soap junkie. I shouldn't get emotionally involved in these people's problems. Only finding Wiltshire matters. Can you walk? Yes, yes. Don't mind me. Let's leave. I offer Florence my shoulder and she leaves on me. We slowly walk towards the elevator and leave six floor behind. <laughs> Halfway done! Two out of four! Almost at that eleventh floor. I'm hoping the eleventh floor is the end of the game. 
Not that I want this game to end like I don't like it, but also I I want a happy end. I don't feel like it's ever gonna come. That's not, isn't it? You guys can see the title of this video. It's not happy ending finally found. It's gonna be something like, oh my god, everything is horrible. The world is on fire. 2020 in a game. <laughs> uh, sleep well, Miss Eiler. Oracle. We're so <laughs> bored. Every book read, every story over. Entertain us. Oracle looks me, locks me in a light embrace, leaning their weight on me. Oh, get me off me. Aw, so cold. I don't have time for this. I have to find Charlotte Wiltshire. What will you do when you find her? Kill her? Oh, gods, no. Murder! Cold-blooded homicide! Just a minute. She makes your blood boil, doesn't she? Shut it. I'm nothing like her. How are you so sure? Duh, I didn't cause the massacre of the entire school. Oh, really? Maybe it's about time you did. Like I said, shut up. I'm not a murderer. I won't become one. Of course you aren't. After all, everyone in this world is free to make the choices they want. You're provoking me, aren't you? Maybe. Still. The others have it easy. They have fun. Yet you? Truly a killjoy, as they say. Did it occur to you that in the house you're the odd one out? I... But since we're here now, you'll learn to have fun too. I'm not falling for that provocation. Leave me alone, you ugly pest. That hurt. Why are you like this, we wonder? Is it peer pressure? Social stereotypes? Mental illness? Which is it? Or are you actually the only hopeful person in this world? You must be thinking this place isn't a lost cause. Nothing is meaningless. We aren't worthless. If everyone would do as I, what I say, we'll crawl out of this bottomless pit. I can make everything right if I just try. I can become everyone's savior. Oh, you're about to wake up soon. You're running out of time, aren't you? I wake up with severe coughing fit. Uh. Uh. In front of my eyes is a toy rabbit. Morning. Uncle says that rabbit toys and accessories cheer up the terminally ill patients. But it looks like it didn't work. Oh, no. Thank you. I'll cherish it. Aww. Felix. You're also a cinnamon roll. I love my little cinnamon roll children. Scarlet, I'm learning to love you too, but like, come on. There's a clear, there's a clear favor here. I ain't lying to her. Looks like your condition is getting worse. I just need to go to a new floor. All right, you do. I already arranged the trip for you. I still have business to finish here, so you'll be going with Bennett. The TV remote person? Yes, that guy. There he is. Hey, Miss Hyler, hi! Your hair is so red, is that your natural color? Uh, yes, it is. Hello, Mr. Bennett. It's nice to meet you. Yay! So, are we going? Are we going right now? And where are we going? You didn't tell him? I'm fairly sure I explained it in great detail. The soap side effects are really something else. Hey, you used to love it too. I was young back then. You both seem young to me. I'll explain it again. You'll be going to explore 9th floor for traces of Charlotte Wiltshire. 9th is into floor is infamous for its advanced civilization that turned their floor into a garbage dump. That's why it's called Landfill. Yay, garbage. So are we going? Are we going right now? Yes. Let's have a small breakfast and sit out, shall we? So we did. Let's go, guys. Doors aren't opening. Try pressing the emergency button. Okay. The floor below us opens. Ah! Ow, that hurt. This pile of smelly organic waste softened the fall. Hopefully it wasn't the tech garbage pile next to it. Lucky! Well, time to report to Mr. Honaker. Hey, Mr. Honaker. Honaker. Mr. Honaker! You don't need to shout like that. I can hear you. Heh. <laughs> so, did you arrive at the ninth floor? Yeah, this place stinks. The anomaly is located underground. Find a way to get there. Aye! Oh! Wait! I think I'm missing something. What could it be? Ah! I lost Miss Eiler. <laughs> you had one job, Bennett! One job! No worries, I'll find her in a moment. God, you better. Connection to Scarlet Lost, attaching control strings to Bennett. Old school world view, you'll see the world in a new fight. 
Oh. I like how it starts a whole new game. And I don't know what that red- Oh, a boat! It was a boat! That's what that is. Okay, I was like, what, is she floating or something? Alright, we're Bennett! Woo! Oh, hey, look! Uh, Mr. Honecker. I think Miss Siler broke. What do you mean broke? Is she alive? Uh, yes, I don't know. I think she hit her head on something when we fell out of the elevator. Dang it, Bennett! You had one job! <laughs> She already infected with a parasite, now there's head trauma? I should have known better than to trust my patients to a soap addict. Sorry! Uh, fine, just take her to Wiltshire's whereabouts. She should be down below, so find a way to get there and I'll aid you if anything comes up. Got it, Mr. Honecker. Experience the greatest of joys, take the challenge and descend, descend to Eden. Seems fishy. Huh, something is off about this. Well. Let's try anyway. So dark, you know, flashlight with you, remember? Oh. Challenge begin. Find the exit. You can use items you will obtain in front of various objects. Choose an item from the menu and interact with the object again. Uh, is this escape room kind of thing? I'm never good at those. Deal with it. However, we don't have all day, so I'll help you if you fail to use your brains. I feel like challenge is too difficult or illogical. You can ask Miss Honaker for help. Just use Honakerpedia from your items menu. He may not solve the puzzle for you, and sometimes he won't reply, but he'll provide useful hints when the time is right. Probably. I'll be back, okay? Fuse box. Soda, five coins. Room 431's locked. Locked. Alright. Gross. Five coins. Buy a soda. Send with me. Laptop's plugged in. There's no power. Yep. Look for the fuse box. After I get my soda. Which obviously is not- I don't think it's gonna be a soda, but let's do it. Soda can! Uh, I don't think you can use the fuse box. Right, soda can. Turn on switch 433. Is laptop on? Got the laptop to work! Whoa! Good job. Password! Just don't type in anything, okay? Fine. Uh, an axe! Wow, okay. Water dripping smells like waste. Some jars. Rotting. Old fridge. Plugged in. Empty. Hey, let's see what the soda can has. Something solid inside. Can't get it out. Uh, how do I crush the soda can? I mean, it's... It's a soda can. Cut it with an axe? Put it in the freezer. I have to use it in front of it. Ugh, that's so complicated. Putting soda can in the freezer. Did you just want cold drinks or do you actually know what you're doing? Both! Kaboom! Soda murder successful! Items inside a key. You can open up another door now. Yay! Maybe it works on here. What do you mean, what? Because this key open. Okay, maybe it opens the drawer. 
Yay! USB stick. Password lock. Uh, got a USB stick. What do I do with a USB stick? Here we go! Should just boot a PC from the USB stick, shouldn't it? Actually, yes, just restart it, set the boot priority setting in BIOS. I know, I know! Uh, I don't know anything about what that. What? <laughs> Can you really just plug in a USB and turn on a computer like that? Weird. That's a treasure map. Let me redraw it. Uh, it, it points here. Must be here. Break the floorboards. No. Nope. I got an axe. I got an axe. Here I come. Must be here. sitting in here. Secret passage. Hey, don't forget your Siler. Oh, you're right. Siler, let's go. Guess we didn't need the rest of the rooms. Cool, y'all. How's it going? We're in some kind of testing facility, I guess. This is the first time I've ever seen a room like this. What about Miss Siler? Still not dead. All right, keep going. Press OK. I don't know what it is. Let me out. Oh, good. Rotting God's Corpse 3. Is this a movie? I need to find out how to open this. Nothing inside this desk. Out. Hint. All right. What? Two on palm. Dot dash 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 dot. Read tiny white book. It's about most code, breaking the barriers, it's a method of transmitting information in, cl in clicks off on off tones or lights, or a series of dots and dashes in written form. Three dots follow the C dots. I see. Look for most cards to have one. Right here it is. So one, nine, and then we need sign language. It's about the Caesar cipher, mathematics and secrets, system or to replace letters with the letter replaces a letter with a letter after two letters in the alphabet, it will come C B so much soap would be blah, exactly. And sign language. Sign made easy. Manual completion. Okay. So the hint is the sign language, two fingers on the palm of the hand, then one nine? Um, oh, there's more. Good, I was like, I'm not seeing it. V. V09. Or V19. Mr. Honecker, it opened. So it was V19 after all. I'm so smart. Let's see what's inside, huh? What did you find? Some kind of journal. So boring. I thought there'd be some severed head or something. Important hint, make sure to flip through it. Man, these escape rooms. Good thing my brain is so large that I can 
figure out all these by myself and totally don't need the help that is provided within this game. Find exit. That was really helpful. Might be a hint or a code. So get to decoding. Yeah, but your brain will turn into liquid soap if you don't try thinking once in a while. You're a bully. Uh... Rotting God's Corpse 3. And the hint was... Find exit. Uh, V19 something 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 something. Nope. I didn't want to click it again. There you go. So V19 find exit. For example, rot two replaces a letter with the letter after two letters in the alphabet. A over C, so on. So... F... Ah, uh, geez, okay. H... Find exit. Maybe it's a weird amalgamation. Alright, okay, I got it. Now I need to take Miss Tyler along. Ugh. I wish it was something like it was making words so it was like a little more clever. I feel like I've got hair in my eyeball all the time. I think it's a side effect of playing this game. This game makes me think like eyeballs. Challenge! Save a life! That's not good. 30 minutes to repair! B movie said that you stay alive, but could possibly kill you in this place. Haha, <laughs> let's find out. Got a knife, he's coming. Two times twice on wall bottles. Uh, square plus triangle, right? Uh, uh, purple something. Florence. Let's keep you at it. Okay. Cry a piece of paper. Bloody piece of paper. Two. Four two. Oh, okay. One, ten, Is it one? It's two plus two equals four. Uh, I think that's eleven because nine plus one equals ten, and then eleven plus ten equals twenty-one. 
Uh, 4 plus 11 equals 15. That triangle math. It's 11. I don't know how to explain. It's 11. Hey, do you? You did the thing of triangles. I hope you're thinking in right triangles. Anyway, the red triangle must be coming or missing them. It's 11. So it's 11. Piece of paper. So 11 plus... Uh... 10? 11 plus 10 equals 21. Or is it times? Figure it out yourself. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twenty-one. Uh, okay. I'm missing something with the second piece of paper. There's something- there's something up with this. Common knowledge, like the first letter of the days in the wheel, for example. Oh, it's, um, months. That's what this is. It's, uh, months. So... I mean, October is the tenth month. I don't get what- Sure. Just 21. Uh, can't we just hide? Alright. Yeah, bring her down. She's, uh, I think she has a fever. Uh, take the soda can? What do you want me to do? Now this is creepy, whatever, just detonate something by this time, the thing is right, but, but. What if it's a monster? You are a monster, Bendit. Now blow things up. Okay. What should I make? Ah, here it goes. Metal container, sugar, flask, cork or paper, a hole. What should I make? Ugh, sure. Good. Puzzles. Because it's a multi purpose product. We got soda. Uh, I'll get this. Empty flask and. Hydrochloric acid. I think. I think it's hydrochloric acid. Uh, I didn't read it too carefully. Uh, uh, I need potassium chloride and sugar. A flask. I think that's sulfuric acid. Potassium hydroxide. Sulfuric acid. Yeah. Alright, now do I have to mix? I need these to mix with sugar. Combine it with hydrochloric acid. Haha! <laughs> I- I- I have a minor in chemistry, so at least I have that to me. So, I have two of them. I have a soda can, I have a knife to make a hole, I need a flask and a cork. Well, I have a paper. So I need a flask. Sugar! Bottle! I think that should be... Um... A lot. What's in here? Oh, is that for the bomb? Like, after we set it off? Alright. 
Uh, can I put the bomb recipe with the potassium chloride? Sugar! Got it. Open container to pour it into a uh, soda can. No, okay, fine. Pour it into the flask. Okay. A uh, bottle. Just the cork. All right, sure. Now can I do it? I have a cork. Goes into this flask. Now we can combine. Okay. You're not very clear on when you want me to touch things. Alright, soda bomb, ready for action. Time to hide. Let's go, Miss Eiler. Into the bunker we go. Three, two, one. <coughs> Boom! Yay! I wonder who it was. Doesn't matter now. At least the door's open. See, those years of chemistry came in handy. I knew what I was looking for. Please stop bumping into the elevator door like that. The button you need to press is right there. Elevator to Eaton. Sweet. Looks like it'll only go down. Happy descent. That's not good. Ah, oh, Miss Tyler's face is turning green. Don't drop her. Will do. Bennett. Yes. I don't have much time left either, do I? You knew? I'm not that dumb. Maybe. This is why I agreed to help Miss Eiler in the first place. That's right. Mr. Honecker is so smart. You must have figured it out a long time ago. Everyone must have looked like a whole bunch of idiots to you. Right, right, enough. You don't need to apologize. Just promise me that you make sure she gets to 11th floor, okay? Who knows? Maybe there's heaven up there. I promise. Oh, Felix, no! Felix, you're like the one constantly decent person. I don't want you to die. I almost put Felix above Charlotte. Uh, hi, Charlotte. Hi, Charlotte. You're a giant woman. Bennett, report back immediately. The life form detection devices are going crazy. Bennett, reporting back. We found her, but she's huge. What do you mean huge? Oh, did you see anyone else around? No, why? Strange. My device detects thousands of heat sources in this place, but where could they be coming from? Maybe from inside her? Seeing all the living organisms on this floor reside inside of her body? That is not impossible. But why? Maybe this world was dying, so she became a shelter for them. That's what their Eden is. You sound surprisingly smart sometimes, although it must be simply because the soap effects are wearing off. So, considering this floor is just one big dumpster on the surface, she sacrificed herself so this floor's inhabitants would survive? That's something I could never imagine Char Charlotte Wiltshire of our floor ever doing. Just look at her, she's smiling in her sleep. And it's not the crooked smile that our floor's Wiltshire always had. Ha, huh, so true. Too bad, Miss Eiler, your Wiltshire isn't here. Uh, one more floor to go, all right. Morning, Miss Eiler, how are you holding up? Want us to give you a soothing massage? It's because of you that I'm dying, you know. Ha ha, hi. I know energy for this. I'm tired, Oracle. I just want to find Wiltshire and get it over with. We know, we know. We're in your head. We've heard you ranting about it this entire time. The Oracle comes close and gently takes my hairband off. <laughs> it's okay, you'll find her for sure. I'm pretty sure she wants you to. So you can let your hair down for now. By the way, did you have fun with Lilith, Mr. Honecker, and the others? No, they're just tools for my mission, Scarlet pouted. Very funny. Aw, I mean, I like your hair down. Both are cute looks for you. It wasn't fun at all, but I learned that this world is bigger than I could have ever imagined. There are a lot of things about it that I don't yet understand. 
I want to learn more about it. Maybe I should start a journey f journal for notes about the truths of this world. So that you can make sense of the world around you. Make up rules to rationalize everything. This is why you can't have fun. That again. If you want us to shut up, make us. Oracle, I need to rest. Stay quiet for a bit, will you? Of course, Miss Tyler. There will be plenty of time for us to talk in the future. That's why you should rest well for now. Before we take over your entire body and turn you into a, like a big eyeball meat monster. Soon all will end and all will begin. Would you like to save your progress? Yes. My head hurts. I'm pretty sure I hit it on something. There doesn't seem to be any blood, however. Did Hanukkah press me up? I need to thank him. Let's go, Lilith. Oh, no. I don't... Felix is a good boy. Felix is a good boy. Hmm... He is right here. Oh, Miss Eiler. Mr. Bennett, what are you doing here? Henry's order. Where's Mr. Honecker? And who's in the body bag? Don't tell me, Miss Eiler. Like I said, I'm under Henry's orders. Do you understand? No, this can't be real. Why? Bennett grabs my hand. Let go, you monster. Where are you taking me? Stop struggling. We're going to the elevators. We'll leave this place and never come back. We are not your friends, nor are we your lackeys. Felix Honecker was a failed experiment. That's all there was. Did Don't you feel the slightest remorse? You could have saved him. Remorse. Could have saved. Say, Eiler, just what do you know about me? Bennett forces me into the elevator and slams the 11th floor button. The doors close behind him. There's an unreadable expression on his face. Oh, Felix. Oh, I don't want. I don't want Felix to die. I mean, I get that I really had no hand in anything to do with his storyline, other than like making sure he lived in the first game. But still, I don't want him to go. Q84, Charlotte Unit Q84. How are you feeling? I feel like crap. Oh, it's old Charlotte! Welcome back, it's been a while. I get up in an instant. What the hell, Charles? Why the hell am I alive again? I don't really understand it myself, but your soul data didn't get deleted. It might have something to do with your wish, but it was still you who bought me back, wasn't it? With horror, I noticed the change in my voice's pitch. Something isn't right. Oh God, the, whose vessel is this now? Please don't tell me it's Vincent. It's not, it's a defective Charlotte vessel. Frick! Can't you just let me rest already? Why do you keep doing things like this? Please try to calm down. Calm down, calm down! I want to die! God, I want to die. I don't want any more of this. I hate this place. I hate everyone. I hate you the most. I don't want any more stories. I don't want to deal with any more world conspiracies. I don't want to be in this body for frick's sake. Please kill me. Miss Wiltshire, a body is but a mere vessel. Don't give me that crap. Well, you're right. But I still blame you for everything. I understand. I'll put you to rest as soon as this is over. However, for now, please, I need you to come with me. What? Why? Where? You'll understand as soon as we get there. Can't you deal with this on your own, whatever it is? I... I can't. I already did what I could. Ah, so you brought me back because you wanted my emotional support. Believe me, my corpse would have offered you a better therapy session than I ever will. Is it that bad? Might as well be. You really are a loser, God. Too human to be one. I suppose I really am. Where are we anyway? We're on 11th floor. The room we need to visit is just a few steps away. Great, I was considering refusing to move and making you drag me there with your noodle arms. I'm perfectly capable of carrying you, Miss Wiltshire. Don't even think about it. Aww. Alright. By the way, what happened to your Vincent vessel? Oh well, I left him alone for a while and came back to a corpse. He killed himself? Yeah, that's what they always do. Even though I went through the trouble of implementing a no-self-harm rule. Talk about wasted effort. Let's bury him later, okay? Hmm. This is the place. For God's sake, stop heightening the tension, will you? Your anxiety isn't contagious. It's just your dad's room, right? So open it already. Alright, here goes. A deep breath and... We're inside father's room. It's quite empty. No furniture, no personal possessions. Nothing. It's the center of the room. There's a working TV set. Oh no. Is this where it all comes together? I can't see anything. 
What was that sound? Is there anybody in here? It's just me and you and the puppeteer, of course. Hi! Still here. Wiltshire, bingo! Hi there! V19 at your service! That sound again. Took you long enough. Been having fun going on adventures with friends? They're not my friends. Yeah, sure. Because Scarlet Eiler doesn't do friends. Because Scarlet Eiler is so very serious. Snore. Stop mocking me and come out of hiding already. My, my, you're so eager, you know? While you've been running around, I learned the truths of this world. Want to know what those are, class rep? Stop messing with me. Where are you? You're no fun. How about I tell you anyway? Lights on! What in the world is this? You and me both, Charlotte, are very con- or Scarlet, are very confused. Uh, why it's mother! Our beloved mommy! The one and only true god controlling everything in the house! The one who gave birth to you! Wiltshire, you- no, no. Mother is kind, beautiful, and understanding. This thing isn't even human. Oh, how do- don't you know? Creators aren't human. All the contents come out of their rear hole. Easy as poop. This is ridiculous. Where are you going- getting with this? Ah, oh, Miss Isla, you're so impatient. The grand groundbreaking truth of the house is that no one here needs to be saved. The world is an entertainment arena. Mother generates scenarios and provides a constant supply of protagonists. When one dies, all she has to do is spawn more charlottes to amuse the spectators. Each 20th one is defective. Haha. -ha. Nah. You think you'll be saving someone, but they're all but actors on this tiny stage. Everyone gets assigned a role to play, and you're no different. Yeah, right. As if I believe you. This is nonsense. Come here. I'll get what's coming to you. You'll get what's coming to you for every person you've hurt. Ah, oh, yes. We'll both bleed for entertainment, and everyone shall be watching. Want to be the hero? Sure, I can arrange that for you. Mother will bestow you with just the right personality to meet the genre requirements. Hey, stop babbling nonsense. I won't fall for your provocation. Right, right. Look, I'm coming for you. I feel my blood boil as she approaches me. Ugh. Something isn't right. Why do I feel so angry? We were supposed to talk. Yet why am I... I want to know the reason behind her tears. I wanted to gouge out her eyeballs with a butter knife. I wanted to understand her. I wanted to tear out her spine and hang it from the ceiling. Ah! Ah! I'll leap forward and tackle her down. Why isn't she resisting? That's right, do it! Shut up! Come on! What are you waiting for? Why? Why aren't you resisting? At this rate, I'm really going to kill you! Do it, Scarlet Eiler! Do it already! And always, always remember, there's not just one person behind the screen. It's thousands! What do you mean? Let me enlighten you. In the world behind the screen, billions exist. That's what the puppeteers are. It's a game for them. They don't care about who you are. All they care about are appearances and whether you're good or evil. Bonus points for born potential. Shut your indecent mouth. Accept it. It's the truth. No, you're a monster. A demon. That I know. For sure. Oh, please. I'm just another puppet. One of many. A silent Charlotte, the sweet Charlotte, the bully Charlotte. Choose the flavor you like for a perfect shipping scenario. Up you to create an emotional response from the audience. Did you know? Entertainment is dead. It's just one big circle jerk between consumers and producers. The audience wants it raw. <laughs> Ugh, as always, hello Charlotte with the deep societal commentary. Pour your soul into it. More pain, more suffering. Perform, perform until you break. Become relatable to the max. Hey, Eiler, we're not so different, aren't we? Except you aren't the protagonist. But that can be overlooked, right? Don't lump me together with the likes of you. Had things turned out differently, we could have been friends, you know. No way in hell. I tighten my grip on her throat. She's not resisting. Like I said, soon you'll understand. You'll be the one crying, I want to be loved. I'm trying so hard, but the world is just so unfair. And Mother's voice in your head won't stop ringing until you lose your sense of self. Shut up. I've been killed over and over and humiliated for entertainment, but I have to be a good girl, because in order to be loved, I'm not allowed to make mistakes. My head hurts. Why does the particular phrase hurt so much? I'm not supposed to care, yet my chest tightens, as if from a premonition. When I open my eyes again, Charlotte Wiltshire has long since stopped moving. Oh, no way. So easily, 
She really is dead. Serves you right, you monster. Ha 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 ha. What the hell? This doesn't feel right at all. It's as if I've awakened from a long sleep. Something isn't right. Well, here you are, lamenting your mortal enemy. But it's too late. You avenged your dead classmates. Aren't you happy? I just wanted to understand her. Sure, but she's dead now. I... It's okay. I can still make everything right. I can do it. Do what? I'll take her place and find out the truth. Oracle, I have a wish to make. This is the only logical conclusion. This is what everything was leading up to. I'll use the Oracle's power to transfer my consciousness into one of these vessels. If it really is as you said, if there really are thousands of eyes watching my every step, oh no, I'm terrified, but I mustn't falter. I can do it. I'll make it a better timeline. I will not become a murderer like her. I'll prove her wrong. I'll prove that free will exists. Even if I break and my mind shatters, this is the only way to find out the truth. Even if I forget what I'm looking for, this is the only way I can atone for what I've done. No one will notice a thing. Then it occurs to me that maybe this was Wiltshire's plan all along. That maybe it was her wish for me to step into her shoes. That maybe I was fated to become her from the very start. This is how her story ends. <laughs> well, well, well. What Charlotte should we choose? It's like doing grocery shopping. Let's see how this vessel will do. Oh, so our baby cinnamon roll, Scar Charlotte? It was Scarlet all along? Is that what's- is that what you're implying, game? My world met its end a long time ago. The humanity I knew has ceased to exist and disappear without a single trace. The gods they believed in have died, and churches were built as their graves. The chaos turned into order and it finally became quiet. All I can do is dream, for I am so, so tired. Will you kind of join me in dream sing? Hello, Charlotte. Hi. Are you Scarlet Charlotte? Charlotte Scarlet? Scarlet Charlotte? Hello. Well, that's cool. You already know all of it, don't you? Yeah. 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 That part I don't remember. That, yes. Scarlet Iyer became Charlotte Wiltshire. She used to be cold and calculated and ended up becoming absent-minded and clueless as her mind crumbled under the influence of Mother's voice. I carefully observed her from afar and gave her a yellow ribbon to differentiate her from the other Charlottes. I helped her when she was trapped in the TV world. I'll help you kill Wiltshire again, I told you. The phrase seemed to trigger her memories. She remembered who she really was and it horrified her. She understood that she had failed to prove V-19 wrong, which in turn made her suicidal. Scarlet Eyler's story should have ended after she wished to save the Oracle. It should have ended, but the Oracle intervened. They created a channel. It became a world made of Scarlet Eyler's soul data. You are familiar with the concept by now, aren't you? Scarlet Eyler couldn't believe that the tenants were real, so imagine they became. She was obsessed with the trial, so it manifested in her world. In my dream, I am the world, huh? How stupid. Why did you go there anyway? I wanted to see for myself what her inner world was like. And you ended up getting humiliated, beaten up, and almost, oh, by the inhabitants. Congrats. Not only that, you took cosplay to a new level once again by using Vincent's vessel. Still, my journey was rather fruitful. I was afraid of facing her for so long, and when we finally met again, she didn't have the memories of the past anymore. Even though I tried to trigger them so many times, she had no recollection of the past events. She didn't even recognize the excerpt from one of my stories that she used to criticize. She was kind, lost, clumsy, easily fooled, delusional. I can hurt her this time around, I thought, but when I fell, she helped me get back to my feet. Skylar Eiler would have kicked me until I lost consciousness. When I got hurt, she tended to my wounds. Scarlet Eiler would have hurt me even more. When I cried, she tried to reach out to wipe away my tears. Scarlet Eiler would have shouted at me. She's changed, so I couldn't hurt her, nor could I help her. Ironically, she couldn't pass the trial herself. Okay, I think I get it, but there's one thing I don't really understand. If you were using Vincent's vessel the whole time, then who was the other you? That's... Hello there. Why are the surprised faces? Isn't it obvious who I am? I am Seth. The father of this dysfunctional family. Hi, Seth. It's impossible. 
There's only mother in the house. Oh, really? How long do you plan on rejecting my existence? Miss Wiltshire, be careful. If this person is the cognitive version of my father, then he's even more powerful than mother is. Easy, easy. I'm not here because of you. Right, because you never cared about me. I have a deal with a puppeteer. To save the child. To save Scarlet Eiler, no, now known as Charlotte Wiltshire. As you can see, the TV box is, in fact, Skylar Eiler's soul cube. All because Charlotte Unit 091, also known as the Oracle, wanted to preserve her soul data no matter what. The child saved her, and 091 tried to save her in return. Truly the romance of the century, isn't it? However, as a result, Charlotte Eiler's soul now resides in this shabby TV set. To free her would mean to break this box she's trapped in. That's what it means to save her. You! Was killing her in mother's womb not enough? She was an unwanted child, is all. It's a common practice. You should know better than to make a big deal out of it. It was a big deal for mother. It's all that matters. Miss Wiltshire, you have to help her. What's gotten into you, Charles? Isn't that the same Charlotte Eiler who drove you to suicide? I'm calling her Charlotte, but her name's Scarlet. I'm, they're so close. I'm sorry I'm saying it wrong. She's not the same. She sacrificed herself for me. Duh, because she has a god dang martyr complex. I forgave her, Miss Wiltshire. Hey, imposter, can't we transfer her soul, her soul data to a new vessel? Unfortunately, no human vessel can contain her at this point. Then, what could we- Whatever, I don't care about her. If you hadn't noticed, I'm not in the Scarlet Isler fan club. If you don't like the show, just switch the channel for all I care. I'm not sure if that would be the right choice. We don't know what the other channel will be like, and it's not like the current channel will disappear either. When is switching the channel be like an attempt to make us feel better? So what? Who cares? You seem to be struggling with the final decision. Why don't we have the puppeteer decide? Say, will you save the chi child? Huh. So all along, Scarlet was Charlotte. Who was as she was because she got corrupted when she switched to the new vessel. And that's... There's two Charleses. The real Charles and the one who's just father but who pretends to be Charles. And now we have to decide if we switch the channel or if we quote unquote save her. I think we save her. I. Uh, all the channels have been awful for her. Switching the channel has always been bad. So. I guess I'm just gonna choose safe for this run. I, I really- I don't know- I don't know what either choice is gonna do. Both of them sound kind of awful, but I gotta pick. So, save her at least sounds nice. Free her from whatever it is. I don't like this choice. So you choose to save her after all. Like I said before, I prepared everything for the journey. The weapon included... A hammer. I... Sure, I'll stand back. I'll do it. Miss Wiltshire, you don't have to. I said I'll do it. What kind of creation am I if I can't carry your burdens? Charles quietly steps back, giving me the hammer. You should wait outside. Just to be clear, that wasn't a suggestion. Alright, I'll come back soon. Yeah, right. You so will. Now shoo. I breathe in and out. So here we are. I'm going to murder the girl who has my face with my own hands. I look at the TV screen. A girl with a yellow ribbon and white eyes stares back at me as if she knows I'm here. Know what, Skylar Eiler? As much as I hate to admit it, in the end, Charles, he... He wanted you to be bored. That's why he, you became your own person in the house. That's why all the tenants were nice to you. That's why nobody hurt you in this place. You're not an unwanted child. He wanted you to exist. And I want to crush all his regrets. After all, doesn't fiction exist to free the mind? That's why I will crush you too. I swing the hammer. There will be no war. Ugh. There will be no revolution. There is no need for it. 
Our existence is meaningless. But that's okay. There's no need for a meeting. We will not fight God. There is no need to. It won't change anything. No matter how wretched we are, no matter how broken we are, no matter how lost we are, we will hold our heads high and march on. Our stories will continue. Welcome to the house. In the heart of the house, there is a bottomless pit. A pit where they slumber. Above the pit, there's a sun that never sets. The black sun sucking all the light in. Wow, it really goes deep. Are you sure there's no exit on the other side of this pit? <laughs> Not even I know. No matter how many corpses I drop here, it never gets filled up. It was a good vessel, wasn't it? Weren't you supposed to keep him safe? Yeah, I really messed up. In the end, all I did was postpone the inevitable. No matter what, there's no way I could have helped him. There's no way of fixing him either. Well, duh, you can't go around trying to fix people. There's no way of doing that anyway. I knew that somewhere on a subconscious level, didn't I? That's why the house is the way it is. Were I convinced that I could change him, or anyone, they would have ended up being the brainwashed, unnaturally happy versions of themselves. Never once have I wished for that. However, the images of people I knew still become distorted in this place. Especially Vincent's. I was so fascinated with the idea of him that I failed to see him as a real person. That's why in the house he's all but an empty shell, an imaginary construct. This place is no heavenly kingdom after all. Now then. He really is gone, isn't he? Goodbye, Vincent. We lower him into the pit and let go. Then we hear a small thud. Just how many Vincents did Charles throw down there? Miss Wiltshire? Yes? There's one more place I'd like to visit if you don't mind. I don't have anything better to do anyways, might as well tag along. By the way, what is that you're holding? Oh, this? It's Mr. Honecker's invention. What did Mr. Honecker invent? <laughs> you know, Miss Wiltshire? What is it, Charles? Uh, Unit V19 believed this world to be made purely for entertainment, but I don't feel like that's the case with the house. During my lifetime in the true realm, I always wanted to be liked by others. Yet somehow it never seemed to work out. No matter what I did, I was either a ghost or a burden. A kid no one wanted to sit with, no matter how good my grades got. Never expressing my opinion aloud, always going along with the flow. Constantly shape-shifting, adapting my personality traits to match others. Saying what others wanted to hear just so that they would want to be around me. Wanting to connect with others, yet pushing them away as soon as we got close. Repulsed by physical closeness, I drifted away from human contact further and further. Yet somehow through art and writing, I was able to connect with others in a way that didn't feel repulsive. Miss Warhol, visit. I would have never been able to open up to them if it wasn't for my work. However small and insignificant it was. After all, all my life I defend myself with things I could put on paper. So even here, this world subconsciously ended up relying on it. Without fiction, without an appealing protagonist, no one would bother staying in the house. That's how I must have felt. I can only hope that the puppeteers observing us will forgive this weakness of mine. If it was you, Miss Wiltshire, you surely would have made the ending spectacular, wouldn't you? But with me, the most I can do is come to in terms with the loss of my loved ones. Losing Scarlet to father's decision. Losing mother to mental illness. Losing Vincent to delusions. Losing Henri to distance. There doesn't seem to be an end to my regrets, is there? Now then, back to the purpose of our visit to this room. Hello, mother. I'm here. Tired, tired. I know. He approaches mother and hugs one of the appendages. You already did the best you could. You gave birth to so many wonderful children, just like you wanted, right? Everything's okay. You can rest now. With those words, he injects the contents of the syringe he was holding into the mass of organs. Seconds later, everything around us begins to crystallize. Uh, uh, uh. The house begins to collapse. Charles, you... You'll be the last of your kind, Q84. There'll be no more stories. No more dreams. No more control. At last we'll be free of everything. No more restrictions, no more fate, no more endings. Wonderful, isn't it? Mother will no longer... Aww. Ah, it's 
not even the first time I've seen him break down, and yet... Poor Charles. It's okay. It's okay, Father. Your world met its end a long time ago. But a new one will surely begin from scratch. The humanity as you knew it has ceased to exist, only to make room for a new generation. As long as there are believers... As long as their gods will be reborn, and churches will be built as their sanctuaries. A new day will come, and your time will start moving again. There's nothing to be sad about. Well, well, well. Looks like you've reached the end of this story. Congratulations, applause for the winner. Yay! I'm a winner. I'm a, I don't feel like a winner. It's been a long journey, hasn't it? I hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, after all, I would hate to make it. Uh, I, I had to make it worth your while. Even if the other parts of me can something. I hope you will forgive me for constantly misleading you to make your journey more exciting. Oh, what was that? I wonder. In any case, both Charles and Charlotte now truly live up to their names, don't they? Right. They are... F for now, free. However, I won't be staying in this hopeless world for long. Having seen so many timelines and of, the, uh, and of this place, having so... I've gone bored of outcomes, many timelines and outcomes. Don't you, don't you, don't you feel the same? How about you feel the same? How uh, Do you feel the same? Sure. I can't read that. Can't read that either. Can't read that either. Nope. You're losing me. You're losing me. I can't understand what you're saying. It sounds super interesting, bro. Super interesting, man. Ah. Um, hello. This is a bit something, isn't it? Especially since we haven't talked directly before. You got to spend time with all the other parts of me, but I, the core part, always ended up being a side character. I'd rather have it stay that way. But you've reached the ending of the story, and there's no one else left to say the final word. So please bear with me for a moment. So here we are. Everyone's gone. The house has crumbled. A fitting end for a self-destructive world. In the end, it was no place for all of us to say. Now there's no mother. The walls of the house can no longer confine me. However, before I leave, I wanted to thank you in person. I'm fairly sure this ending wasn't what you wanted, or what were you were here for. After all, in the end, I couldn't become Charlotte Wiltshire, or Scarlett Eiler, or a proper Vincent Wordsworth. By the way, Wordsworth is a surname I made up. It has nothing to do with the real Vincent. Even technically, this game doesn't pack much fun gameplay. All there is is frustration. Endless screaming into the void of pent-up anger. A disappointing world of a disappointing person. A game with no winners. Yet another world where your choices don't matter. But you still stayed until the end. Through illusions and metaphors, fairy tales and delusions, we were able to have a conversation. And after letting it all out, getting it all out there, I was able to let go of my regrets. Just because you listened. That's why, thank you for paying a visit to the house. I hope you enjoyed your stay, even a little bit. Ah, uh, but I think... I might not be the one you want to hear a thank you from. Let's try it again. Heh <laughs> long time no see, Seth. Hi, baby Charlotte. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about you. The god of the sword old made sure I wouldn't. Um, a lot of things happened, but I'm okay now, really. In fact, I'm really happy. Somehow in the end, everything worked out. I'm at peace with myself. I hope that you're okay too. I always thought you didn't have many responsibilities other than looking after me, but I was wrong, right? If there's something that's troubling you right now, or you don't think that you can go on anymore, please remember that a new day will come. I'm sorry I couldn't stay with you a little longer. It's time for me to move on. That's why, thank you. Thank you for taking care of me. Let's meet again someday. Bye, Charlotte. Bye, Charles. True end. Goodbye, Charlotte. Oh, I'm Seth. Glad you're here. Felix.
six. Bennett. Florence. It's been a while since we've seen Aiden. Charlotte, <laughs> willing protagonist. Marla Man. One who began it all. Oracle Frey. Protagonist of Hello Charlotte. Let's read the afterword. Hello, thank you for playing Hello Charlotte. When I began to work on this project, I didn't think much of it. I just, just like I didn't think I had a future to begin with. But somehow, over these three years of game development, things changed for the better. I was able to come in ter to terms with myself and found a place to belong. I still had to deal with a lot of things, but somehow they became less heavy in my head. Somehow they didn't seem as hopeless anymore. The final game is a tribute to a certain someone who didn't get a chance to be born into this world. Someone I came to both love and hate. Someone I wish existed anywhere, somewhere. In the end, Hello Charlotte was a personal story. In it, some events, namely deaths, were entirely metaphorical. Some were also- some were so very real. I can only hope that this story was able to reflect the feelings of desperation and hopelessness over losing someone, and the despair for inability to bring them back no matter what. It's a feeling I've been living with for a long time. A feeling I've constantly fear of experiencing in the future that's to come. If you enjoyed the final episode even a little, I'm glad. If you didn't, that's okay too. If you bought this game and not pirated it, thank you for your support. I did. I paid the money. Your input won't go to waste. Thank you for visiting the house. Let's meet again in the future. Sincerely, Ethereum. All right. Uh, and then we have the gallery. All 55 pictures. It's been a long story. A very, very long story. But it's finally over. Uh, Ether Solution has a solution for you. Free ad space. That's creepy. Uh, that's creepy. I don't like staring at that. I'm gonna click load. So I'm just looking at a different page while I do the outro. <laughs> that has been Hello Charlotte. Uh, it has been a wild ride full of twists and turns and it was a more impactful story than I was expecting when I was searching up horror games to play <laughs> for October. Uh, but yeah, that was really... I, I don't want to call it nice because of course the emotions are... They're a mix of negative and positive. It was really enjoyable. I really liked it. Um, I love these oddball games that just throw random things at you. I love RPG Maker games for that explicit purpose. It's why they're, they're some of my favorite genre of games. It's just people don't have to have a lot of gaming know-how and they can make such creative stories and such brilliant worlds and tell things that other people aren't even attempting to tell so it's been a ride wow it's been a ride i'm looking over at the clock i've been playing this last section for two and a half hours over two and a half hours now um i'm tired i will need time to process this and really let it settle but thank you guys so much if you've watched the whole thing with me and enjoyed this experience and joined me in it uh i hope you got something out of it too i hope it wasn't too terrible um yeah uh, i will see you guys next time in another episode thanks for watching Bye bye Hi there, it's the end of the video, my friend. Hit the bell if it was okay, I'm sure I'll make good content someday. I'll play some games or do some drawing Pokemon and fights with darling video essays and reviews. I couldn't do it without you, so thanks. Like and subscribe.